So let's take a quick look at how to create fabulous mock-ups done with PSD template smart objects in Affinity Photo. That is PSD files created in Photoshop that have smart objects in them which Affinity Photo can also read and edit. So how to mock up your designs. You've decided to create a knockout design. Now it's time to present it to your client. This is where mock-ups come in handy. A mock-up is a full rendering of your design on one or more of the client's products like labels, business cards, stationery and signage. A more complex mock-up might show the client's book on a bookshelf or in a reader's hands, showing the world the product will inhabit. Now which mock-up to use? An effective mock-up doesn't just make a design three-dimensional, as on the right there. It brings a design to life. When you're working on a mock-up, keep the following tips in mind. You're showing the product in action, and you're keeping the focus on the mock-up. Stay away from stock photos. Stock photos are commonly known by everybody, and it's really easy to find them. Showcase multiple well-thought-out scenes featuring the design. And there's an example. There's a bad example, just a picture frame. And there's a good example. That's where you might see such um, a, a mock-up scene. And you can see that the frame is skew if a little bit. It's tilted. What's the first thing people do when they see a tilted photo? They want to reach out and straighten it. So that helps to focus your eye on that mock-up scene. But it's on a wall. It's got a, perhaps an office palm tree near it, so you can see the image in setting. Now, because this is fairly short, where do you find well-made PSD mock-ups? And the best place I've come across so far is Cover Vault. Now, these are really good, um, really good mock-ups. One of the best sources around for good quality mock-ups. They're 100% free, and there are lots of sources available with Google Search, but you need one that's reliable and consistent, which Cover Vault is. Now, having said all that, and blowing their trumpet, I'm not associated with this site in any way, I might add. I just love the work and consider it worth sharing. So let's get to it. How to use a smart object PSD in Affinity Photo, and I'm using it on the iPad. It works equally well, if not better perhaps, I don't know on the desktop, but I prefer to use the iPad. If you're a crafter or an author, your marketing can move to the next level by creating mock-ups. Let's start with a nice book cover using a suitable mock-up. Now this one I've used a 5x8 gun crime mystery um, mock-up. And it's shown on the left there as it comes from um, cover vault and you can see it's their mock-up. That's hardly a real book with the word cover vault and mock-up on it. Now the first bit of advice is collect the images you will use. If you're, you're obviously going to put your image on that cover so you need the image you're going to use and it has to be the right size for that page. Download the stunning mock-up that you want i.e. the one on the left and you're ready to go. But don't forget when you collect that image for your cover, you're actually building a cover. So have your cover image ready, not just the image itself. Load the mock-up into Affinity Photo. And to do this, you extract the zip file and check the preview file. Most of these come with a preview file. That's just an image of what it will look like when it's printed out. Now load the PSD file into Affinity Photo. There we go. Carefully look through the layers without altering them. Don't touch them to alter them. Just look through them at the moment. With this mock-up, you can change the cover image and the background if you want to. And also, you, well, you can change everything else, of course. But we're just focused on the cover. I'll only be changing the part of the cover image. And oddly enough, it's quite clearly seen there. It's about halfway down, level with the girl's eye in the image photo. You can see the 
the um, group there and you can see the cover image of the girl and there's a couple of couple of scenes next to it. Changing the book cover. Make sure your cover design is done and ready and stored where you can easily access it because the next bit is opening that image. You don't want to be spending hours looking for it. Select the layer with the image and you can see I've got it selected and open there. Now double tap on the image, not the wording. You can see embedded document cover there but you click on the little icon the picture of the girl double tap on that image and it will load as a separate panel as part of the main workspace and there it is loaded as a separate panel and you can see it has a couple of layers with it there's a texture layer and underneath that a layer that has the the words 5x8 mock-up on it but they're hidden by the fact that the image is on top your display should look like this so only the actual image is shown with its layers. We will again only change the image layer here with our pre-selected cover design. Select the top image layer in this case. And you're going to place your image in that layer. Open tools and place your own image. Carefully check its size and position. You don't want a massive image that you've got to fiddle around with for hours um, to get it to fit. If you make it to fit to start with, you're well on the way to success. Now, with the image in the same position as the original, simply unselect the original and leave it for future reference. Move your image layer down to place on top of the other two layers. You can see across the side there, layer 22 is now on the top and my image layer is above the texture and layer 18. If you have them the other way around, the perspective, um, uh, the, the, the perspective doesn't work. A bit tongue-tied there. Remove or hide the unwanted image above it. For the moment, I've just got it hidden, but in the end, I remove them because, well, it's pointless leaving them there. The, the layer 22 gets removed. Satisfied? Okay, when you think it's all in place, tap the home icon. That's that, the left facing arrow up there. And you'll go back to the original image. It may just take a moment depending on the size of the image you're dealing with. But it goes back to the original complete scene with the book sitting there. And you should have your cover, another mask, and a perspective mask below that. If you leave the other layers even hidden behind your image layer, the perspective layer may disappear. I don't know whether this is a function of Affinity Photo or the process itself, but with only one image there, the perspective layer stays there and stays true so that the text on your page is in the proper perspective. Now you can see the design is finished. Now it's a little bit skew if there and that's done on purpose because what I want you to see clearly that's better. There's the full image in perspective. That's my design with um, I put my name on it and murder at the zoo for a title. That's all on that single image. They're not extra layers, they're all on that single image. I didn't want to be messing around with layers, which you could do in that other photo um, when you double click on the, on the thing to edit it. But it's easier just to do it on the image. Now there's no such a book as Murder at the Zoo, but there is me, Robert Chalmers. Remember that if you want to edit the cover image at all, again in the future, just go back to the image layer and double tap on it. It will open as a separate workspace. Then save it all again by tapping home on the top left and away it'll go and save it for you. And that's about it. It's as simple as that. My best advice, experiment. It's fun. Thanks for watching this fun little exercise. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.